besieged were concentrating upon the defense of the stretch opposite the wood. The seemingly unaffected line beyond the wood had become the theater of decisive action. Here, the defender's front was sparse and scattered. Everyone who could be spared had hurried away to the south. Just as the man at the weir had lowered the water almost to the bed of the ditch, the ants on a wide front began another attempt at a direct crossing like that of the preceding day. Into the emptied bed poured an irresistible throng. Rushing across the ditch, they attained the inner bank before the Indians fully grasped the situation. Their frantic screams dumbfounded the man at the weir. Before he could direct the river anew into the safeguarding bed, he saw himself surrounded by raging ants. He ran like the others, ran for his life. When Lady Lanigan heard this, she knew the plantation was doomed. She wasted no time bemoaning the inevitable. For as long as there was the slightest chance of success, she had stood her ground, and now any further resistance was both useless and dangerous. She fired three revolver shots into the air, the prearranged signal for her men to retreat instantly within the inner moat. Then she rode towards the ranch house. The planter called her peons around her. Well, lads, she began, we've lost the first round, but we'll smash the beggars yet, don't you worry. Anyone who thinks otherwise can draw his pay here and now and push off. There are rafts enough to spare on the river and plenty of time still to reach them. Not a man stirred. Lady Lineagen acknowledged her silent vote of confidence with a laugh that was half a grunt. That's the stuff, lads. Too bad if you'd missed the rest of the show, eh? Well, the fun won't start till morning. Once these blighters turn tail, there'll be plenty of work for everyone and higher wages all round. And now, run along and get something to eat. You've earned it all right. In the excitement of the fight, the greater part of the day had passed without the men once pausing to snatch a bite. Now that the ants were, for the time being, out of sight, and the wall of petrol gave a stronger feeling of security, hungry stomachs began to assert their claims. The bridges over the concrete ditch were removed. Here and there, solitary ants had reached the ditch. They gazed at the petrol meditatively, then scurried back again. Apparently, they had little interest at the moment for what lay beyond the evil reeking barrier. The abundant spoils of the plantation were the main attraction. Soon, the trees, shrubs, and beds for miles around were hulled with ants zealously gobbling the yield of long, weary months of strenuous toil. As twilight began to fall, a cordon of ants marched around the petrol trench, but as yet made no move towards its brink. Lady Lanigan posted sentries with headlights and electric torches, then withdrew to her office and began to reckon up her losses. She estimated these as large, but in comparison with her bank balance, by no means unbearable. She worked out in some detail a scheme of intensive cultivation which would enable her, before very long, to more than compensate herself for the damage now being wrought to her crops. It was with a contented mind that she finally betook herself to bed, where she slept deeply until dawn, undisturbed by any thought that next day little more might be left of her than a glistening skeleton.